just got a little devotional tonight, um, something that God had been speaking with me on. And I want to start in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 25. And I'm going to read this from the NLT version. It says, when the storms of life come, the wicked are whirled away, but the godly have a lasting foundation. When the storms of life come, the wicked are whirled away, but the godly have a lasting foundation. I'm going to ask if Brother Anthony will say a prayer of our message tonight. Amen. Thank you, Brother Anthony. You can be seated if you'd like to tonight. I like what Brother Anthony said during his prayer. Hopefully y'all were listening. But he said, I hope the message, the word that goes forth tonight gets deeply rooted into us. And when you start to talk about a foundation. That's what a foundation is. A foundation is something that is is deeply rooted and it's there to hold up everything that's on top of it. And that's the last word of this verse. It says, when the storms of life come, the wicked are whirled away, but the godly have a lasting foundation. The godly. Now, it's not because we're so great. It's because our foundation is so great if we don't get whirled away with every storm that comes. If we've got that right foundation, then we can have assurance that we're not just going to be tossed and turned. And that lasting foundation, it's not something that you carry in a suitcase with you or you know, it's not something that you put in your car and drive down the road with you or anything like that. It's something that's deep down inside of you. It's in your heart. It's in your mind. It's in your soul. I know we talked about that Sunday morning, the heart, the mind, and the soul. And that foundation of Jesus Christ has to be there. If you're going to have full trust in Him, if, if you're going to you know, know that whenever that storm comes, that you can have faith that you're not going to be whirled away, it's going to be because that foundation has been built up inside of you. Now, I just went through the process of building a house. And I've built, built many houses before. But I'll tell you this, until you build your own, you don't know nothing. Good Lord. Mm. And one of the one of the things that that made it so frustrating, and I'm not about to say my daddy, he didn't make it frustrating. One of the things that made it frustrating was the weather we were having. There was a whole a good month there to where we, we dug dug out everything. And then it just started raining and wouldn't stop. Now here we are, as of, you know, before last Saturday, we were praying for rain. Please, God, send us some rain. And I remember I was, I was praying then, God, let it stop raining. <laughs> let it stop. And the reason I wanted to let it stop is because they were trying to do the foundation of my house. And the reason that they couldn't just come out there and do it is because You've got to make sure that foundation, that's the most important part. It is. You can take, I mean, it's, it's in the Scripture. You can find it in Luke. You can find it in Mark. If you take 
and build a house on something that's not worth being built on, when a storm comes up, it's just going to be taken away. Just any little thing that comes up, bam, it's gone. I know you all have heard the story of the three little pigs. You know, the big bad wolf comes around. One built a straw, just blows it down, it's gone. One built a sticks, gone. But the one that was built with that brick, that rock, when he came, and when the wind came, it stood. And it's because of that foundation. That's the reason that it was there. Now, I'm sure that everyone here, young and, and old, I'm sure that you've seen pictures of how devastating a storm can be. And there may even be some people in here tonight that have experienced you know, a, a horrible storm in your life. Now, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about natural storms out there right now. So if you kind of want to get a picture in your head, you can start to develop one. And in fact, just right here down the road from us, just literally turn right out of the church and maybe not even a quarter of a mile right there on the right, you'll see Kevin and Cindy Miller's house. It's got nice trees going down the driveway and everything. It's a beautiful house. But in 1994, the house that was there got hit by a tornado, and it completely demolished their home. And thankfully, you know, nobody was hurt or injured or anything during the tornado, um, at least from, from their side. But I remember hearing from my dad, and, and I've heard other people in the community talk about it because, you know, we don't see a lot of that around here. You know, we're not in the, the tornado belt or anything like that. We occasionally get hit by some pretty hard rains and winds and stuff from, you know, hurricanes, you know, coming up from the south. But tornadoes are something that, you know, we don't really have a whole lot of dealings with. But it de demolished their home. And I remember hearing people talk about it, that they found stuff from their house just right down the road all the way over there where Kenny Rogers' old home is. And that's almost where my new house is now. So I got to thinking about that. When I was driving over here, I said, man, it took me 12 minutes to get here from my house to right here around that area. I don't know how many miles that is. But I mean, just to think that a storm can just come through just so destructive and take and just whirl away stuff miles and miles down the road. It's just, it's incredible. It is. So there's no doubt that, that natural storms can produce chaos. Well, I want you to know that spiritual storms will produce the same exact kind of chaos in your life. They'll, they'll produce it. And if you're not standing firm, then you're just going to get whirled away. And there's no telling where. When you get whirled away, there's no telling what can happen. And, and I want you to think about this. Think about this, this word in a different standpoint when I say world. Instead of the way it looks on the screen, W-H-I-R-L-E-D, -L -E think about W-O-R-L-D. When you get whirled away. When you're too concerned about what's going on out there, then you are in your spiritual walk with God. When that storm comes, I tell you what, it's going to be rough. You're going to be fighting. And you know what? You'll still fight. You'll still fight, you know, even if you're standing on that, that foundation with Jesus. But we don't have to worry. You know that He's going to bring you through it. He's going to bring you through that storm. You know, there's... We get to thinking about, you know, different storms other than tornadoes. I remember when I was in high school when in 2004 when Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans and people just seeing thousands of people that 
just lost everything that they had. Everything. And I remember people, even, even here, in high school and in college, we had people that transplanted from New Orleans to right here in our area. There's no such thing as a storm-free life. And you know what? Would there not be a such thing as a storm-free life, you might as well go ahead and be prepared. We all go through things in a spiritual sense, whether it be you know, heartache or you know, whatever different kinds of struggles. But God can help protect you during those times. He can help protect you during times of sickness, times of loneliness, times of loss. Whatever it may be, God can be there to help you through it. And He'll see you through it. And we might not be able to predict or prevent storms, but we've got to be prepared for them. We've got to. You've got to know where your storm shelter is. I remember in, in high school and elementary school doing tornado drills and stuff when we were in there, and they would show us where to go if, if something ever happened while, while we were at school. We'd do the little drills, and we had teachers that would show us where to go. Now, I never experienced one of these in real form to where we actually had a storm to where we had to go out there but there's a part of me that wonders what might have happened if we did have one if if the teachers if we were looking to them in order to show us where to go and they were all you know all over the place and didn't know where to go then that means all of us are going to be lost probably That's why you can't rely on somebody else to show you the exact way to your storm shelter. You've got to know inside you. Just because Brother Anthony's got a foundation in Jesus Christ doesn't mean that, that I've got one. And if a storm hits me, I can't run and, and say, well, Brother Anthony's got a good foundation. That ain't going to matter. It's going to matter for him when the storm hits. It ain't going to matter for me. You've got to know what you're doing. You've got to have your own personal plan. That's why it says to get into the Word and seek out your own salvation. You've got to have that foundation in Jesus Christ. You've got to. Now, we can be there to help each other. I'm not saying that. And in fact, we should be. If we're going through storms, yeah. If you want to seek out help from other people, that's great. But just know that until you've got your foundation right, then it can cause destruction. It can cause destruction with you. And you don't want to wait until the storm is hit to start trying to figure out what to do. You don't want to be in the middle of the storm and looking around thinking, where do I run? Where do I go to? Who do I call? You don't want to do that. So that's why you've already got to have a plan in process going forward. You've got to know where your storm shelter is. And that storm shelter is found in Jesus Christ. He's our foundation. He's our storm shelter. He's so many different things to us, isn't he? He's everything. He should be. He should be. That just hit me like a ton of bricks when I said that. That's not in my notes. He can be a lot of different things to you, but is he everything? Because that's what he should be. In Luke 8, verse 25, the disciples are on a boat when a storm hits. Now, I'll say this. To be on land when a storm hits, yeah, that's one thing. 
But if you're ever out on the water when a storm hits, whew, that is rough. And I'm talking about not, not even like a tornado or anything. Just let some rain come and some wind kind of start to whip up a little bit, and then the boat just starts rocking. And it's, it's bad. The last time I went on a we, – we used to go on, on a lot of cruises when I was growing up. The last cruise that I remember being on, and I believe this was with uh, Brother Josh and Sister Courtney, that uh, me and Casey went on a cruise with them, and it was one of the days that we were headed back, and a storm came. We were you know, pushing through the storm, and that huge ship was kind of rocking a little bit, and I was like, I don't know if I like this or not. Man. You know, it, I, I'm good. I'm good on, on a boat for the most part. I got, we went out deep sea fishing one time and I kind of lost a little bit of lunch um, because the waves are so tossy turny. Normally a cruise ship's pretty good, but that's what it just, I couldn't believe how much that boat, that huge boat was rocking. But you know, that, that brings me back, that helps me paint a picture for what these disciples were going through. Because you got to think, they're in a wooden boat here. They're in this wooden boat. All right, they're out in the middle of nowhere. This huge storm comes, and everybody, it just mass chaos. And that's, that's the human nature. It is. Our human nature is to start to, to lose it. And Jesus... I guess Jesus was a little bit cooler than me because Jesus is in the back of the boat just sleeping. It's like he's in a little crib. You know, the boat's just rocking. Jesus is just back there sleeping. And everybody's running around trying to figure out what are we going to do. And, and somebody looks back there and they say, how is he sleeping during all this? And they go back there and they, I, I've got to think that they went up there and abruptly woke Jesus. You know, Jesus! Caught it. Thanks, man. They, they were scared. They were scared that something was going to fall out of the boat, including them. And so they go and they abruptly wake Jesus. And they say, Jesus, you know, we're, there's this storm. We're, we're about to die. And Jesus just is calm as he could be, just gets up and just think about it. He speaks to the storm. He speaks to it. And everything just calms down. Everything smooths. And I've got, just from reading that passage, those passages right there in Luke 8, I've got to think that once Jesus calmed that storm, that there was a little bit of just quiet. And there was a little bit of just awe. And the disciples were, were awestruck. And Jesus, what He says to them here in verse 25, He says, where is your faith? Where is your faith? They had the foundation right there in the boat with them. Where is your faith? If you've got Jesus in the boat, you don't have anything to worry about. You don't. And that's essentially what he told them. He says, do y'all not know that, that I'm hanging out in the back of the boat? If you, know, if you know me to be the Son of God, then you know nothing's going to happen to this boat. And I know I've said this here before. But if you don't have Jesus in your boat, get Him in there. Because then when the storm comes, you don't have to worry about it because your, your faith, your foundation, your rock is right there in the boat with you. You don't have to worry about going to look for Him. He's right there with you. And His power is right there inside you. And guess what you can do? When you've got a storm coming, you can speak to it. You can speak to your storms because you've got that power of God running through your veins. 
You've got His Spirit inside of you. I'm one that, and, and, and y'all can y'all can tell me, y'all, you know, this is just as a Levi opinion right here. This isn't this isn't God's word, but we are all vessels of God. We are, and we've got that blood running through our veins. And it's my opinion that we've all got His Spirit inside of us, some way or another. The question is: Is are you going to activate it? Are you going to use it? It's already there. He created you. He put you together. He put you together for a purpose. Are you going to activate what's inside of you? In Psalms 46, 1 through 3, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, we will not fear. We will not fear. You may be going through the biggest storm of your life right now. I'm telling you, hold on. Hold on to God. Hold on to His promises. Because He is our refuge, and He's going to be the one that brings you out on the other side. He is our strength. When you're going through something, I know a lot of times it feels like, man, this is, this is just weighing me down. I don't know what to do. That's when you need to start activating some of that strength that you've got from Him. Because if He's inside of you, His strength is inside of you. And it says right here, clear as day, God is our refuge, and He is our strength. A very present help in trouble. A lot of times, you know, we might not be able to feel like that God's working in our situation right then and there. Just know He's there. Now, I also want you to know something that there's a lot of times we have storms that we go through, that serve a purpose. Every storm has a purpose. We might go through a little bitty small storm that gets us ready for something bigger. But God's going to be there regardless of how big the storm is. Whether it's a little rain or whether it's a hurricane coming through. A lot of people probably feel like they've got a hurricane trying to come through their family right now. Feel like that maybe a hurricane's trying to come through this church and try and tear us apart. Don't let that happen. This church is rooted and its foundation is in Jesus Christ. So there's nothing that the devil can do to tear this church apart. There's no storm that can come against us that can tear us apart. To just keep going. Keep moving forward. Don't look back. Keep moving forward. Proverbs 18, 10, it says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. I love how it it says the name. It just doesn't, it doesn't say just the Lord is a strong tower. It says the name of the Lord, just that name, just that power that's in his name. And when I was talking earlier about speaking to that, that storm, just speak his name. Jesus, remove it. Jesus, come work in it right now. There's power in the name of Jesus. And it's so, it's so funny that we get so caught up in, in trying to do our own thing. Trying to figure out our own way. You know, I'm, I'm going to figure my way out of this storm. The older I get, I'm learning, I'm learning more and more. So when the storm hits, just go ahead and say, just back up. 
and just pray and say, you know what, Jesus, you tell me what to do. Jesus, you show me how to get through this storm. We'll get through it together. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. You know, when I, when I think about a tower, you know, how big and, and huge, you know, a, a tower is, you know, you can look from afar off and you can see that tower. One neat thing, if you're ever driving down Harris Road, and a lot of people, I, I've, I've told people this that live on Harris Road that hadn't noticed it before, but when you go around the first little curve on Harris Road, and you kind of come out to the straightaway, you can look up and you can see the water tower in Sandy Cross. You can see the top of it. I've always thought that was really cool. When I, so now when I go around that curve, I look off in the distance and I see that tower and it, every time it makes me smile. And when I read that verse, that's one thing that comes to mind is the fact that, you know what, I might be far away, but I can still look to God every time and see that He's there. I can see that, that He's standing. Regardless of what I've got going on, He's standing. He's there. He's in position. And He's never going to leave me. He's never going to forsake me. And He won't do that to you either. He'll never leave you. He only wants what's best for us. It says the righteous run to that tower and they're safe. If you've got a storm in your life right now, run to Jesus. Run to Him. It didn't say the righteous think about going. It doesn't say that, you know, the righteous, you know, went and packed all their things and, you know, figured out another way or, you know, thought about it for 30 days. It just said the righteous run to it. So stop overthinking it and just run. He's there. He wants to be there. He wants you to run to Him. And if you run to Him, you'll be safe. But it's up to us to run. We've got to run. Nobody's going to do it for us. Daddy, if you'll come up, and Brother Bradley, if you'll stand with me tonight. I'm going to read one more verse. And this, this verse is actually what brought along this, this whole message. I was, I was reading my Bible, and I got to this verse, and it, it just it, it struck me. In Psalm 62, 2, it says, He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. And I shall not be greatly moved. I want you to think about that tonight. That He only is your rock. There shouldn't be another rock in your life. He's the rock. He is your salvation. There's no other way to be saved except through Jesus Christ, who is our rock, who is our refuge, who should be our everything. He's your defense. He's going to go to battle for you. And all that, it says, He, 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 He. And then it gets to I. I. And I love it when it gets to that eye. Because when it gets to that eye, 
that's when it makes it very personable because that's talking about me right there. It says, I shall not be greatly moved. I was reading different translations of, of this same verse. And one translation said, I shall not be shaken. I shall not be shaken. And when I got to thinking about that word shaken, I got to thinking about you're not going to shake if your foundation is right. You'll stand firm. You can stand firm in the storm. He's our storm shelter. He's our refuge. He's our strength. He's your strength tonight. And if you need some encouragement, if you need some strength to be built up inside of you, and you've got a storm, come give it to Him tonight. Come give Him your storm and say, you know what? Go ahead and take it. And here's my thing, and I'm going to switch it up on Daddy. Daddy, I'm going to sing praise you in the storm tonight. Don't wait to go ahead and start praising Him. Just go ahead and praise Him right there in your storm. Because He's going to bring you out. Praise Him like you've already got through the storm. Job, it says, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. What does it say after that? It doesn't, it doesn't say the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. I'm going to go sulk in my house. What did he say, Sister Debbie? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Y'all clap. There's victory in this place tonight. There's safety in this place tonight. There's strength in this place tonight. And if you've got something going on in your life and you need that spirit to be activated in the midst of your storm, come activate it. Because there's prayer warriors here tonight that'll pray with you. They'll pray you through the storm as well. They'll be there for you too. Because that's what we've got to have. We've got to have unity. We got to all be in this together. And if you're going through something, you know what? I'm going through it with you. If you're rejoicing over something, I'm going to rejoice with you. I'm going to sing praise you in this storm tonight. These altars are open up. And I tell you what, just whatever you've got going on in your life, just come give it to Him. Let Him be your strength. Don't worry about your own strength. Let Him be your strength. Let Him do the work. Let Him be the foundation that He's supposed to be. These altars are open. I'm going to start singing this song. And let's just get lost in the Spirit tonight. I was sure by now God, You would have reached down and wiped our tears away. Stepped in and saved the day But once again I say amen And it's still raining And as the thunder rolls I barely hear you whisper through the rain I'm with you and as your mercy falls, I raise my hand and praise the God who gives and takes away. And I'll praise you in this storm, and I will lift my hands, for you are who you are, no matter where I am. And every tear I cried, you hold in your hands. You never left my side, and though my heart is torn, I will praise you in this storm. 